Evening, welcome back to Data Analytics Ireland.ie. Thanks for revisiting. If you're back again, it's great to have you. Um, today, we're going to do some control checks on files before they're imported. So, in some of my previous videos, I would have discussed how to bring in files, how to check for unwanted characters, and put it into a data frame. That's all well and good, but what happens if your file is empty? So the purpose of this video is to go through how to check if the file is empty and basically have some output onto a screen just to actually show you how it all comes together. Now obviously if you're batch processing or you're basically as part of a bigger process where you won't be putting any output to a screen you would have a, a different types of alerts. Um, to let you know what's going on so you can interrupt it and see and fix things. But for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, we'll just put it to screen. So, basically to start off, I have created three files. I've created a CSV, a TXT and an XLS. So they're all three are empty. So one thing I want to just show you before we get into the code very quickly, um, this will become relevant now in a second. But essentially, what you'll see is there's one kilobyte. This is an empty file, but it's file size of one kilobytes. The text file is empty at zero kilobytes. And the XLS file is empty, but it has nine kilobytes. So the file sizes are important um, for the nature of the code I'm going through. Um, but uh, I'll show you where this is all relevant now. So to start off, we basically I have three, one, we have test one, test two, test three, and test four. So four different tests here. Uh, so what we're going to do is test one. And we're going to import, do from path lib import path. And what this does is basically give you access to the directory of stroke paths on either your local drive, which is where I'm working off, or potentially on your network drive, or wherever the actual path to the file you're opening up and reading is. Okay, so I'm going to start off um, with basically bringing in operating system and sys as well. This will be required down below. And first of all, we're going to so create a variable called my file, and we're just going to say its path is here. Okay, so if you look at this, that's import empty tyt empty text. Sorry, import empty text dot txt, and that's this folder here. Okay, sorry, that's sorry, it's not this folder here, but that's this file here. Should I say? My apologies. Okay, so essentially, what this line is opening up the code, um, and basically, what this line is doing um, is just basically checking is the file there? Does it exist? So, is there a file? in this path, in this folder, with this name. And that's all this is doing, okay? Um, if it doesn't there, if it isn't there, basically say it should come back checks, please. Um, so please check. So if I change this to A, okay, and run this. Okay, so see there, it wasn't find it. And it also gives you this gives you this big error message here, but also it also says checks completed the test says please check. So essentially it's it's not finding it. So if I remove A here, because it's not in the folder, okay, rerun this, and all the error messages are gone, and we'll look at the output now in a second. Okay, so that's what that line is doing. Um so this line here, what it's basically doing is one way of checking, and this is where I was referencing here one way of checking the relevancy of why this is circled. This text file is empty and it has basically a size of zero kilobytes, so basically a size of zero. So what this line is doing is it's basically saying go to the operating system path and get the size of the file, which is this file here, and if it's greater than zero, basically print out its text, basically says txt files populated okay so it's basically saying because it was greater than zero there's information in the file but we know that this is zero and it's empty so the logic here is basically it's checking this line here and then it says will i print this out no because because the file has got a value of zero it's basically printing out the text file is empty please check and retry okay so if this is part of your process um 
basically it would be basically giving you an alert that, that the file is empty so if we go down here so this is test one if we go down here it's basically so there's the file crew basically saying the file exists let's check for there um, and basically then it's saying the text file is empty please check and retry so there's the first check so that's one way of checking for a txt file and seeing is it populated or not okay so next one we're going to check for csv but um and this is where this i'm going to show you the, why, why how it doesn't work based on um the size the file size so in this instance it's nine kilobytes okay so this logic what it's doing is it's the exact same logic up here um but what it's doing is essentially it's going down here again it's looking it's looking for the file or so looking for the file size and it's 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 basically saying if it's greater than zero say it's populated okay okay that's and then otherwise it's saying the csv is on to please check and retry now what we wanted it to do was basically say the csv file is empty please check and retry but because for whatever reason when you're creating csv files or xls files it the nature of the files when they're saved to your local drive or they're saved to a network drive or wherever they're saved they actually don't save them as zero kilobytes they actually because there's extra information added in to the file it's actually greater than zero kilobytes so in this instance if you were to use the operating system path to get size um it wouldn't work because by default when the files are created even if they're empty they won't they'll always be greater than zero so you won't get the proper answer here. Um, so if we go down to this is test two, okay, we're basically going to see the output of test two. So we're it's basically saying fi file exists, okay, so that's grand, we know it's there, but it's also saying files populated, okay, but we know that the file it's basically because it's greater than zero because of the kilobyte size, nine kilobytes, it's going to give you this answer. But we actually wanted to give this answer. But the reason we know the logic is working, but because of you using the get size, the get size in this scenario won't work. So the difference between this test two and test one is that TXT files, when they're generating, they're empty, they'll default to zero kilobytes. Whereas a CSV file, when it's generated and saved, it will be great, its kilobyte size will be greater than zero. So this wouldn't be a good way to get to check if your file is empty or not using the get size so to fix that i've created another bit of logic down here so here's just um, another piece of code so again we um basically just referencing my file one in this scenario is equal to txt so i've created the txt so we we can interchange csv and txt here because we're doing read csv down here so using read csv works for txt and csv files because they're essentially both TX text files in and pretty much so what we're doing here is we've got a um, piece of logic um, basically saying it's a for statement and then within that we have a try so we're basically telling it to try if if you're basically create a data frame and equal to create a sorry yeah create a data frame essentially equal to df and, and basically read the csv file and try that if that doesn't work then otherwise basically tell it that the it's empty okay so if you it's basically saying this line here if you can't read it read it in um it's basically saying that the, the csv txt file is empty and um, please recheck and try okay so in this scenario this is test three um so we okay, and turn over here so the ca csv test is empty please check and retry so that's given us back that's given us back the right answer we want okay so i have done that with txt there as an example so let's just show you this if i change so this is csv csv and if i change this to okay rerun this and test three Again, it's given the CSV test is empty, please check and retry. So that's a very handy and quick way um, of running in a CSV or TXT file and checking is it empty. So, you know, we have 
tried it up here with txt as well so this is this one way of doing it tuning the, the getting the get size which is looks at the file size but this is also another handy way an alternative to doing that and in, in essence you can do it for csv or txt so it's very handy and it's very quick and it's less lines than what you have up here okay so uh, the final test we're going to look at is if you have a, a, an Excel SX file coming in and you want to see, well, is that empty or is it not? So this is actually a bit more straightforward. Um, we found, found a way to actually just use df.empty, which is a Boolean and it's basically value returned to true or false pretty quick. So again, it reads the Excel file. Um, which we know is import xls.xlsx. Um, basically, it's just doing an if statement, very straightforward. So if it's empty, it basically says xls is empty, um, else it's not empty. So we know it is empty, it's true. So this should give us back our value. Um, and if, because it's not empty, it doesn't return this value. So if we go down here, we basically saying read and empty. This is obviously just the message I missed from the show. And then it's basically saying xls is, em is empty which is this. So that means it's returned true to this uh, Boolean statement here. So that's a quick oversight of how to check files are empty um, before processing them. It's quite handy, probably quite important from controls, especially if you've got an automated process um, and there's no manual intervention. It would certainly be a big plus. So you know you're not feeding in something an empty file into a process which has other processes relying on because then there's the downward um, batch or any batches or any processing downstream would fail as well because they have nothing to process. So thanks for coming along again and um, it's great to have you if you're here the first time with Data Analytics Ireland. Appreciate some thumbs up um, sh shares of this video also on our YouTube channel. If you want to go there and subscribe, I've got lots of different videos to to show to you and you can go through and learn more as you see fit. So we'll see you soon with our next video. Take care. Bye.